we're seeing more and more of this now, the prevalence of robotics at home. And uh, usually they basically have become an integral part of our day-to-day -day life. So whether they are robots that uh, respond to speech, understand our preferences, uh, answer basic questions, to more sophisticated robots that can clean the house or even help with day-to-day -day chores and tasks, help with assistive mobility or independent living. But I think the important thing that uh, people maybe are a little bit wary about is confidentiality and privacy. Given that uh, for these systems to do what they're supposed to do, they need to collect a lot of data about the individual using the system in the household, but also the environment in which the system is being deployed in. So maybe less so about uh, safety of, of how the system functions, more so about reliability and uh, data privacy. Usually, most of the technology providers will provide some sort of uh, provisions or guarantees that uh, data is kind of secure and it's used only after being sanitized so there is no kind of uh, identifiers or confidential information being used to drive this application. And I think, you know, that is something that uh, is important, but I think in terms of how the technology evolved, versus the policy and the regulations that exist in industry that build those robots that will kind of create a bounding box or some sort of provisions around the use of technology and, and protection of consumer. I think the technology uh, is ahead of uh, policy uh, in terms of basically uh, how this is uh, structured properly and framework in such a way that uh, will guarantee not only product quality, uh, but uh, ensuring uh, end user or consumer privacy and protection of uh, personal information. I think, uh, you begin to think about this data being collected, which basically is intended by most of these organizations to identify uh, user preferences and identify uh, what their use patterns are, time of day, what typical information they would look for or search for. And I think the whole idea is to uh, uh, give this perception that the machine is intelligent and is kind of like a part of the household and understand what, what humans are looking for and what end users are looking for. So it's, again, in a nutshell, trying to identify user trends. But obviously, again, the caveat here is that uh, we need to collect a lot of personal information and the issue of security and privacy uh, becomes extremely important. Some of, of the kind of more established organizations like uh, Amazon or Google or Apple, the technology is very sophisticated and there is a lot of uh, artificial intelligence in the background that drives those applications and they are data heavy. They are very dependent on data. So I think in this case, typically, most of these organizations would, would have consent. Users will supposedly will have to read, but there is a lot of fine print and they have to consent to it before they use the technology. So there is actually very little that end users can do uh, by way of uh, scrutinizing or maybe accepting some of the provisions but uh, turning away some others. When you kind of get a Roomba robot or a robotic arm that can help somebody with limited mobility at home, there is a lot of customization that you can make when you order this uh, very unique one-of-a-kind setup. Uh, and a lot of add-ons that you can include. And I think I would encourage end users when they pick those add-ons and they begin to customize uh, the product itself to look closely at some of the contracts and the provisions to make sure that uh, what they're signing for is something that they are, uh, again, can live with and basically does not create this added level of anxiety uh, when it comes to being able to interact with the system uh, on a day-to-day, -day, especially if it does have a camera or it does have a speaker and it's recording everything that is happening in the household for it to be able to respond to the human needs and answer their questions.